Hey guys, I'm Tiffany and you found us on the Wise Guys channel. Today we're going to talk about the four arrows in human design and the four arrows are also known as the variables. And so I've got Leisha and April and the three of us have four diff or three different variable setups. And so we're going to talk about that today. But before we get started, uh, Leisha, would you just give us a little background on what HD is and what these variables even are? Sure. So, um, of course, you know, we have a lot of resources of what human design is at a more deeper level, but it's pretty much a synthesis of ancient and modern sciences and systems and wisdom. Um, it's really at its, at its core thing, a decision-making tool. You know, life comes down to decisions, big and small, tiny and, and large. So it's a decision-making tool in order that shows us how to operate within our particular mechanics, how to differentiate and be the individual that we are and not do the one size fits all um, thing that kind of is the messaging out there. And it really ultimately removes resistance from our life. Um, and, and we really feel the smoothness of experiencing the life we're here to have and, and operating as we are designed to operate. Um, and really the, the, the story of the four arrows or the variables are, um, you know, if you look on, your, on my body graph, if you pull up your chart, you can see arrows pointing left and right and all the red and black and all the things, but there's four arrows, right? <laughs> left, right. Um, and what those are is each, you know, they each stand for a different thing, which we're going to go into, but essentially it's different points in human evolution and how each of us, but each of us are designed um, to, you know, digest food, the environment we're meant to be in and what we're supposed to see. So that's what that can show us. Um, and so, really, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I just was going to let you guys know, it, usually this is kind of a second session topic. And so the first thing that you're going to want to do is get your foundation session in human design, understand your strategy and authority, and maybe you stay there for a while. But when you're ready to chew on something else or get a little bit more information, um, these four arrows, these variables can be really, really powerful. And to me, it's like, this is where um, I like, to me, this is where it was life changing for me. So at first it was like this huge aha moment of being awake in the dream. And then now with the variables, it's like, oh, this gives me something to really work with and click into. So I'm excited to talk about this with you guys today because uh, we are all d completely different. Um, so that's all. Um, and just, I love how you said that. And I think just reminding ourselves that, you know, again, this is what's called the substructure of the design. There's a lot to go into, but, um, and human design is this huge wealth of information, knowledge, deep, wide, vast, um, however, it comes down to the simple, like the simple and profound is follow your strategy and authority. And you can just do that and your life will be transformed into the life that you are here to have. And you'll feel that deeply, you know? So just to remind us, we don't have to get too complicated. We can also just do strategy and authority and that'll do it. That'll do it. Lead you around the universe. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I guess, you know, when we're talking about the four arrows, there's a, a set on the left side of your chart and a set on the right side of your chart. And so do you want to talk about maybe the left side of the arrows first? Sure. Um, so, yeah, so there's the red side and the black side, right? So when, when we talk about human design, the red is what we are maybe not aware of. It's how our body and our life, our vehicle is designed to operate. And that's what we can see in the red side. Um, and so there's two arrows on the red side and they're gonna be left or right. And there's a lot to dig into with that. And then on the on the right side of the body graph, there's the black activations of the planets and the gates that they were in. And then there's two arrows on the right side. And of course that's our personality side, our mind, what we will be aware of and honestly how we express to others in the world and what we express. So generally, um, the left and the right, so we've got the left and the right of the body graph, right? So that's red and black. So we'll just, okay, put that over there for a second. The arrows in all four positions on either side of the body graph are gonna be pointing either left or right. Um, and so would it be a good time to go into like what's just in general what left and right means with yeah. pointing? Okay, Yeah. So, um, so, you know, again, all, if we can think of it very simply, the past is more left facing, facing, right. And the future is more right facing just as a simple, you know, way to visualize it. Um, and every human alive now is a mix of left and right arrows. Now 
Some people are all four left. Tiff, Tiff is quad left. Um, and some people are all four right. April, April is quad right. And some people are mixed, which I, you know, of all different things, but ironically, I'm two left, two right. So it's like we have this whole beautiful um, kind of dynamic with the three of us that to me feels very rare to have that particular a quad left, a quad right, and a person that has exactly <laughs> the ones in between. Um, so we're excited and experimenting with that. But the left in general is the past. Um, it's what we had to do as, hum as the human species. It's strategic. It's conquering the environment. It's having a plan, seeing the steps. It's focused. Um, it's really, um, you know, it's a more limited uh, view because we had to focus on the thing that could secure resources that we could conquer our environment to secure the species um, continuing to evolve. Um, and this is all genetic imperatives. This is not something we're like, I'm gonna be strategic now. Although, you know, there's an element, there's, there's that as, as well. But the right facing arrows um, are more, oh, and also left is more active. So it's like, it's a more a busier active type of, um, type of dynamic. The right is future, right? So it is, it's actually more receptive. It's not necessarily as active. The, the, wherever, wherever you, the arrow falls that you have a right arrow in that, in that spot, you will be more passive, more relaxed, more receptive in that spot when operating correctly, or you're designed to, that's what the design mechanics say. Um, it's uh, kind of more of a peripheral type awareness instead of a focused, I'm picking the piece of information that I need out and that's what I need to move forward with this step to ensure survival. Right is more taking it all in, but they kind of, it's almost like it needs the left, the right um, variables, people need the left variables and people to really kind of pull out, hey, we need this, what do you know? Boom, now it's all in there but they need the left to access it. So we, we need each other, right? The left pointing, we can't see everything. We can't, we're, it's not how we're meant to operate and it would be incorrect if we were seeing everything. Um, and the right, you know, needs to see everything. They do see everything, but they can't get it out unless the left, you know, asks. So it's this beautiful dance, right? That just, just um, that when operating correctly, it, it's, gorgeous and we've we've totally experienced some moments like that where tiffany's focused she's got her ideas she's got the you know the plan laid out um she'll ask a question maybe i'll throw in a little woo -woo -woo -woo, you know way to ask it or something and then april the quad right goes blah, 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 and all this amazing stuff comes out <laughs> of the well um yeah so i think that kind of covers generally what the the pointing arrows mean anything yes. to to add well um to I guess on my side, it, this is very relieving to understand this about me because you guys that know me or know my personality, you know, we, we know each other on a professional or a friendly or like a casual like, level, right? But the people that are really close in my life find my quad leftness quite challenging, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like sometimes it's great in business or even as friends or like before Wise Guys, I did event planning. And so having that quad left, man, I can make a spreadsheet about an event for a, a six figure event in just 10 minutes, you know, like I know all the steps it's going to take. Um, you guys know that I did cookbooks, right? So this is another great use of quad left, like understanding what ingredients are needing, when you need to go to the store, what you need to bake, what you need to do, like all the little pieces of the plan that have to start back here in order to get here. Um, but when you talk about the, the right as more peripheral and something that perhaps is lacking in my design, you know, that is, um, that's something that I can grow from or learn from or that interaction level um, that, that it's like, it's so great to bounce your ideas off of somebody else that's different from you to, to access something different, no matter if you're left or right, you know, the good, the left people or the bad right people right now, I'm kidding. <laughs> because it's yeah. also, it's also integrated, right? It's just, um, each of the ones going back and forth. I want it before we go into like our individual experiences, I want uh, you to teach about each of the variables, each of the, the four placements. So if you're looking at the body graph, right, you're starting at the top left. And, and um, to me, this was like the key that turned everything on. So let's do that chunk next. 
Yeah. Um, so, okay. So we said there's four arrows. There's two on the red, red side. There's two on the black side. Um, and Tiffany's exactly right. We, they're even called, they're called the four transformations or the radical transformations, these four variables. Um, and the top left one, the red, the top one on the red side is the first step. It's like the, the you got to start there. And again, to go back and just kind of keep us at the core, simple, profound um, concept is you start with strategy and authority, right? Eventually it will be correct for you to, you will naturally be led to the correct um, digestion. Now that top red arrow is called digestion or in human design language, it's called determination. So um, it's going to be either left or right. And there's, you know, further detail with that. And we can give our examples or whatever. But again, these are different points in human evolution um, where we evolved to eat a certain way. And so some of us eat the way we ate, you know, when we were just coming out of the caves and we were hunter gatherers. Some of us are designed to eat that type of um, method, simple primitive foods. Some of us are designed to eat in certain conditions, right? Because that's the journey of human, the human species and how we evolved. So that top left red, the top left arrow is the red arrow. That's the first one that you will come to usually um, after following your strategy and authority. And after you sort of align a bit more with, with your geometry. Um, so that's called digestion. Again, it can be left or right. Um, and left, if your arrow is, if your top red arrow is left, it means that you have a more active body and brain, right? It means you might need a little more food. It means maybe fasting isn't quite the thing for you. Um, you might just need a little all day or something like that. You may need more activity. Again, it's the experiment, right? It's gonna depend and it's gonna contradict seemingly with other parts of your design. So you've got to experiment with it and, and validate it for yourself and find out how all those little beautiful pieces come together in you because you're the only one that can share that with the rest of the world. No one else has that unique combination but you. Um, so that top left one, red, top red one is digestion or determination. Let's hang out there though before yeah. we go on yeah. so that we can do some Good. of the examples in each one. So you, in digestion, if it's left, it's active, maybe eating a little bit more all day. That was news for me because I was like, well, I have to fast like everybody else because it's intermittent fasting and I really still didn't, I mean, that's the part where I struggle with like eating all day because in today's culture, I, right? Like in today's culture, that doesn't sound right, you know, but I did experiment with it. And what I found is if I do eat before I work out in the morning that I have a better workout, I have more fuel, I have more energy. I know it sounds like it makes sense, but I had to experiment with that for myself, that active eating. If your arrow is pointing right, it's passive. Um, do you, so April's would be passive. And what yeah, mine's what, passive and yours is passive. And so, um, tell us, will you, will you just share just this one? We don't have to do all of them, but, uh, just which our digestion styles are our determinations. Yeah. So, um, Tiffany's is called, it's called thirst. Um, and it, it can be either hot or cold. So with Tiffany, it's hot thirst, which means, um, above body temperature is how, her body can can actually break down food and then that will in turn actually nourish her brain and body, right? And then um, April has, April, are you, are you actually, what is your determination? Do you know it? It's closed taste. Closed taste. So um, April's is taste, it's right, so it's passive. So you may not need as much food. Now closed taste, it's either closed or open. And this was a point in human evolution where we had to figure out what was poisonous and what wasn't and what we could survive on and what we couldn't, right? What foods were edible and all of that stuff when our minds developed to that point as humans. And so um, with closed, it's really, it's um, there's not gonna be, it's what does your mouth literally open to eat and what does it not? Now it's not just eating, it's also taking in information. So with closed, it's just, it, if you just take it as the simple word, it's like, you know, there's a closed amount of things that are, that are for you. You're not going to have a taste for a lot of things. There's just not that much, you know, there, there's a limited amount of things that are going to be correct for you. And so again, it's experimenting with, you know, maybe you, maybe you don't even want to try something, but I will say something you said, Tiffany, about how you're like, but I got to eat more. Like, this is weird. I need to be fasting. That's the thing. And everybody's supposed to intermittent fast. I mean, this, this digestion and, and environment, the next one that we're going to go down to in the red side are the, 
very, a very deep conditioning that we receive from womb on, right? From birth on, because um, everybody, think, you know, we need to eat at certain times during the day. We need to be awake at certain times and active. We need to, um, you know, eat certain amount of vegetables, certain salads and cold and hot. And we need to, I mean, nobody thinks about these things because no one is aware of it. Um, so immediately, as soon as we come out as kids, we're conditioned to not be in touch with this. Again, no fault, no one's fault, no fault living, right? No blame. It's, no, it's not anyone that did anything to us. It's just the mechanics of how it happens in the world. Um, so just to note that you may hear your digestion or determination initially and be like, I don't know about that. I do the opposite or like, that doesn't feel, that feels weird. And that's going to be a lot of things in, in, the, in your design that you probably hear, but it's hearing it and just, just letting it kind of sink in and then watching over time. What do you see? What do you experiment? What, I mean, what do you experience when you try different things? Um, so, and this is just showing the mechanics. So anyway, closed taste is April's. And then mine is about wait, light. Wait, wait let's oh, yeah. go ahead. April yeah. a little bit. So April, like, what do you eat? <laughs> Well, it's, it's interesting because, um, I am a pretty adventurous eater and I do like a lot of foods, but, um, I do intermittent fast, <laughs> which is hilarious. Mm -hmm. And that's actually been really good for me. I have noticed that I can go along. Like I like to eat meals. Like I don't like little snacks throughout the day. I, I will eat a snack, but <laughs> I like to sit. My preference is to like have a meal and then go hours and then have a meal. So like, I won't eat all morning. I just have black coffee and water and then I'll like eat lunch and I'll eat like a proper lunch, like a hot meal. Um, and it's always like something that usually like dinner leftovers are great for me. Um, and it's a pretty substantial meal. Then I can go the rest of the day until dinner, you know, 7, 8 PM and then eat again. And so I don't need food regularly. I can work out like yesterday. I ran over five miles um, before I ate anything and then didn't eat anything for like another couple hours after I just hydrated and I was great. Like I felt amazing. So i um, definitely have, it, I've started to see, as Leisha said, um, just observe myself and, and how this plays out. And I'm definitely seeing that happen. I, there are for sure things that I'm like, you know, I'm just not going to like that. I'm going to order the same thing on the menu that I know I like. Um, I like to try things, but then once I find the thing I like, I like to stick with it. So that's so, where yeah. I think close really that's, comes in. That's also like your Scorpio son, right? Like I'm like, it's fixed. Like I know what I like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get too I crazy. And I stick to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I so have, fixed in so many ways. <laughs> I have a family member that shares that and she is, uh, she only eats like she, she's always been that way. And so even as a kid, when I was growing up, this is my aunt and she, uh, I noticed like she would eat just like certain things. She would only get a couple of things from the grocery store. And in some ways it was great because I knew I could get these awesome white like rolls with butter on them from Great Harvest every time I was there. But also there, there just wasn't a lot of variety. And uh, I didn't need variety. It's just something that I noticed as a kid because um, maybe my household ate a little, we had a different eating style. But the other thing that I think is really important about this, if you're parenting or if you're um, the, the nurturer in your household that, that does the cooking or the feeding of the people in your tribe, you know, not everybody eats the same way and having grace for that. There's um, in my household, I'm feeding a kiddo who is high sound. And so she likes to have her uh, earbuds in while she's eating. And this is contrary to us sitting down and having a meal and talking together and, you know, connecting and what you're supposed to do as a family. And I have really let go of it because I feel like it's better for her cognition. It's better for her in general. We don't, it doesn't mean we're not connected. It doesn't mean we can't ever have a close conversation. And, um, you know, and she appreciates me seeing her as an individual instead of, what is best for me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's another important thing to- I think that's huge. I mean, think about all the fights that we have with kids, just collect like the culture, like the fighting of trying to force kids to eat a certain way and eat certain things. And it was a huge um, source of like literally trauma in my household uh, with Adam, right. just little growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so having this tool earlier would have been so helpful for me. 
but um, you know, so great to know your children's um, eating style. Or your parents, like whoever you're feeding, right? Like my, uh, my mom, when I was growing up, I didn't eat anything besides queso and donuts, you know? And I, I wasn't like an overweight kid or anything. I was active. And of course my diet changed later, but if my, if I had an aunt that would come stay with me, if my parents were out of town and try she would like try to, she would like chop up these freaking bell peppers. And I'm like, I want a Coke, bro. You know, <laughs> like, what are you doing? I get to eat what I want here. This is my house. You know, it was just such an ordeal to try to give me nutrition when um, maybe I was already being like queso maybe it's just a bunch of cheese and that it, we can agree that maybe that's not the best thing for a kid to eat every single day however it was hot thirst and I was drawn to that and there was a reason for that and fortunately I had a mom that that like didn't care in the way that she was like well she's not gonna die <laughs> you know? like she's she's alive here but I do want to talk about your uh t- your digestion Felicia too. oh yes mine well Real quick, can I, I, I just want to, because you guys made some things come up that I want to clarify on this determination of digestion, which is, again, this is the most, this is the area that we are most, probably most homogenized other than like type or whatever, you know, um, in the world, but we're immediately homogenized and very deeply homogenized with food in, I mean, even you saying eating queso, um, this, this determination does not say what you should eat, right? It doesn't say you need to eat hot broccoli and have like hot vegetables, Tiffany, you, it, you know, instead of cold salads, it says this is the conditions of the food or the environment in which you need to eat. That's what determination says. And, and what it does is when, when a child is fed correctly, which none of us were, because unless our parents happen to know human design, which none of ours did, you know, um, then what it does is it causes a lot of neurons and potential neural pathways to go dormant. So they're dormant. So our cognition, which is our cognitive potential and our super, like the thing that we're, our cognition is really optimized to see and, and, um, and feel right. And to be sensitive to then, then, you know, uh, yeah, I'll, I don't know what the end of that sentence was, but basically the, the neurons have gone dormant. And so when we feed our child correctly, um, before age 30, in human design, zero to 30 is childhood um, because we're on a 84 year life cycle. So when we feed our child correctly though, they can really unlock, like we have no idea what humans cognitive potentials are and the optim, you know, what when optimized by being fed correctly or just being able to trust your kid that they know what they need to eat and the condition of the food. Now that's a whole shift as a parent, right? And, and in society. So just acknowledging that, that it's, you got to experiment with it and kind of, if you, if you want to, um, and see if it does that now there. And I do want to also make the point before I share mine, that in the chart, there are a lot of other details, gates, channels, centers that actually do say, okay, you're going to need, um, you know, more fresh vegetables, you might need some meat here and there, even if it's once a year, you can maybe would want to be a vegetarian. So all that is also something that you can kind of learn from your chart in a, in a more even next level advanced thing. And follow um, your strategy and authority, you're going to find it anyways. So exactly. you don't even really have to know, but exactly. if you just want to know, <laughs> then right. it, can, it can kind of validate what you might have already naturally been led to right so absolutely yes great point um okay so mine is called it's light and it's the most sensitive um digestive system and it's mine is indirect light so there's direct and indirect and what that means is that someone with light um is going to be sensitive to to the the light level of light when they're digesting so what they say is indirect light can um, not digest food when um, when it's when it's daytime. Now what I what I learned as a nuance to that is um, when I need to be functioning and talking with people, and my brain needs to be optimizing, my cognitive potential needs to be um, access accessed because I'm expressing something or doing a session or doing a podcast or whatever. Um, when I need to be functioning. If I've eaten and my body is digesting, my body goes inward and starts to cannot focus outward. Um, it's so what I use it as is since I have a daytime life, 
Um, I mean, I have kids, I get up, we, you know, I have daytime life. I enjoy the day. I'm not a nighttime person, which some would say the indirect light people are nighttime people. I've never been a nighttime person. However, I fast all day. I have a right arrow in digestion. I fast all day. Um, and I didn't ever used to do that. I used to have to have breakfast, have to have lunch, but I would be, I mean, I was like foggy and I had so many health issues, just way more than the normal person, right? I mean, I have the most digest, the most sensitive digestive system. And so like of humans, right? Of, of the 12 that you can have. And so um, now I, I fast all day. And then when I eat, I, you know, I eat at night. It's not always when the sun goes down or I might have a little like, you know, a, like olives or nuts or something as, a, as an afternoon snack, depending on how I'm feeling. I let my strategy and authority, you know, or really my authority it's like my splenic authority is like, oh, look, I just, I got a handful of nuts. Like there it is, you know? Um, and that feels good for that day. But usually I wait till, till the evening and that's my meal, right? And then I might have two meals before bed or something. Um, but yeah, so, that, and I mean, the difference of my uh, thinking and my body is profound. Like the pain, I, I had chronic pain for decades, like so painful. And um I don't have pain and it's insane to me. It's like a whole other way of living. So yeah, so that's you my know, and like to, I guess to, uh, keep that part going. Well, it's an, it's a, it's a kindness when you know each other's thing too. It's like, if we're going to meet at like our human design meetup here in Austin, we'll find a place that has shade for Alicia and sun for Tiffany. And we'll just sit on that dividing line. You know what I mean? Um, like April said, she likes her coffee black. I like my coffee hot. <laughs> I don't care really what's in it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. All the things. And so there can be like a kindness with closed taste versus hot thirst. It's a way, it's like a, a new way to have work your love languages with the people that you are in community with or you're in tribe with, you're in family with. Um, and so, you know, that's that's just digestion. And I mean, that is life changing, you know? <laughs> I mean, that yeah. is the freaking ticket. And I like, I have a master's in health psychology and I get really fiery about this subject because we we are just so homogenized in the way that we think about what's going to work and even if I go get my blood work done right there's a specific thing that you're missing or whatever like maybe it's not that you know maybe it maybe I can just work my own magic and once I did I, I had a lot of inflammation that went away I had things that even though I was eating perfectly and strategically quad left everything I could do wasn't working, but when I got my digestion style in check, um, it did. And I still experiment with it. I still let myself off the hook. I still eat some cold salad sometimes, you know, like last week I ate it almost every day. I had this like awesome spinach, strawberry, like gorgonzola balsamic thing that just tasted good, <clears throat> but I'll let it sit out of the fridge for a while. I don't eat it ice cold, you know? Um, the second one, if you're on the red side, the left side down, is environment. And so to me, uh, I, I do want to briefly go into this one too, um, but the environment to me is like, this is another data piece that if you are not in your correct environment, it's hard to operate correctly, correctly for you. Um, it's challenging, it's difficult. And so you can experiment with that. Like, uh, will you tell us the different environment types? Yeah. Um before I, I want to just add a thing before we go into the, to the, there's 12 environments, there's six, and then there's a binary on either side, same with digestion. Mm -hmm. um, what this environment means, it's, it's where you are going to be optimized, what kind of environment you're going to be optimized in. It's where you will meet the correct other. It also is where um, your neural pathways will open up. Those dormant potentials will reawaken. Same with eating correctly. That's what this is going to do. So this is almost like external nourishment. You know, the, the taking in food and information in your digestive um, or determination way that you're designed to, that is going to nourish your internal, your brain and your system. The environment is almost like the external thing that nourishes your body and your brain. Um, the other is the internal. It's also, um, you will have, you know, it'll enhance your long longevity, the way you feel and all of that stuff to be in the correct environment. So the environments are also, again, part of human evolution of how we evolved from, um, from caves on out, right? Um, and so it's, um, 
I want to pull up the list of environments to make sure Sorry, I go in the right order. But I just no, no, it's it's good. It's totally, it's fun to hear the examples. Okay, so um, okay, I'm looking at a weird thing. That's not, that's not what I need. Um, okay, so the first environment is caves, um, and caves is where we started in um, like when humans sort of started to look for shelter, right? Like we went into caves, we kind of, if you think about it, it's, um, we had a lot of people in a cave. It's not like one person lived in a cave. It's like the tribe was in the cave to protect itself, right? So caves is the first one. And there's a whole lot of elements with that that we can go into. Um, then we moved to, to trading, to markets is the next environment. It's called um, it's called markets and it's like when we would trade and exchange and like oh that cave those people ha are making this and that cave and those people are making that and that cave and they kind of can come together in this common area maybe between the caves and exchange and things like that so markets is really about where exchanges and things are taking place um, caves is about sort of controlling your environment one door you know there's one entrance to the cave um, so you can kind of start to think about that kitchens um, Tiffany's kitchens and so is my oldest child um, and April, what is your environment? <laughs> I keep asking you because I cannot get my thing to pull up right now. <laughs> I don't know. I have, oh, uh, where do I find oh, it? Because I can pull it. Um, it's not on a regular body graph. This is going to oh, okay. be on a, a more advanced chart. Um, but let me, uh, I don't know why my software is doing a weird thing. I see your name there and yet I can't pull it up. So we'll put a pen in there. Okay. okay. So later. kitchens <laughs> is um, where we could start to manipulate things with temperature. So um, it's like we could, you know, soak things at, like we talked about earlier, we could soak, um, well, no, that was, I didn't talk about that earlier, but we could put grain in water and heat it up and, you know, have food. We could dry the meat and hang it in the cave and, you know, or out in the marketplace. We could, um, you know, control temperature in some way. And so, that's um, really, it's about mutation and transformation um, with a lot of ingredients. And then there's some kind of new thing that comes out of it, right? Something is transformed. But just, um, just to clarify, kitchen's environment doesn't mean that kitchen, a kitchen exactly is where I should be all the time or one with kitchen's environment. It's like the laboratory, the place where things come together, the alchemy, the mixing of things, right? So yes, it's good yes. for me to be in that sometimes. But like, I can't sleep in that. You know what I mean? There's, um, it's just a, it's just one piece of it all. Right. Yeah. And, okay. So I just wanted to And make it can sure even people... be like, like you live in Austin, right? Like that's a, there's a lot of ingredients, you know, people come in, they're transformed. They come out different than they went in. You know, there's, um, there's all kinds of ingredients to mix together in different ways. Um, and so again, caves, markets, and kitchens are all considered hardscape, which is more of an urban type of environment. A lot of auras in together, a lot of beings. And that is how, that is where people with one of those environments are going to, they're designed to be healthier when there are like people and exchanges and doesn't mean 24 seven, like you're saying, it just means um, sometimes, you know, I want to go dip in a market, you know, and, or go sit at the restaurant or, you know, go to town or whatever. So um, it doesn't mean you can't live in the in the in the country or not. Yeah, like you're saying. So then we um, moved from being able to transform things. Then we um, mountains is the next thing, and so mountains, valleys, and shores are the next things. And there's considered more landscape. So if someone has a mountains, valleys, or shores um, environment, then they're they're not maybe going to feel as healthy in with a bunch of people all the time you know a bunch of auras in an urban environment like we people with with caves markets or kitchens can thrive in an urban environment with the smog with the whatever right like we are more designed to be in that now there's nuances and other things to look at in the design as with everything um so mountains is about being above things kind of a sort of a looking out seeing a view it can also be about levels of oxygen um elevation and elevated view right valleys is when we kind of we were in the valleys and like the trains went through the city the towns all of that was kind of in there right and so it's about looking out and sort of seeing what's going on with the world uh, but it doesn't mean necessarily getting into it it's kind of kind of more watching it and it's also about there's a sound element to that and then shores is um 
it's really, it's, you know, where two sort of uh, different landscapes or environments or um, kind of situations meet, you know, and there's artificial, there's natural shores. So natural shores would be a beach, right? Like, or a lake with a grass or whatever. Artificial shores can be, you live on the edge of town and you can kind of see a field over there, but you're in town or, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, and again, these are all just different points in human evolution. So that's, that's that it's, bottom red arrow. Yeah, yeah. And it's so cool to understand that about, you know, yourself and the other, your others too. So we've, so far we've got digestion that's at the top left, environment is at the bottom left, and in there you're going to have an arrow going left or right, mine are all left, um, and then the next one you go actually to the bottom black side on the right, so right. one, two, three is going to be um, the next one. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's called perspective, or on some things they call it view, um, or view perspective. Um, and so that, if you notice now we're on the black side, like you said, so that's the things that we're going to be aware of. It's kind of more of our personality, how our mind works and things that we might be able to see, um, you know, maybe even quicker than the, than the red side. Um, so the, that's perspective. It's really what, once your brain is nourished by being fed correctly, information and food, um, it wakes up the dormant potential. Your cognitive potential is unlocked. It leads you naturally through strategy and authority because you can now you're cleaner and you can see and you can feel you're more sensitive. You become more sensitive to what is and isn't correct for you through this. And it's glorious. Um, but then once your brain is nourished, your cognitive potential is unlocked, you move to the second arrow on the red side, you're in your correct environment. Oh, now you're around the right things. You're seeing the right things. The correct other is in your life. You're clean. Your frequency is not distorted. Now you can really see out that window of the back seat. You can really see what you're supposed to see. And what that does is once you find out what yours is, um, my perspective is uh, personal, right? So that means that I'm supposed to be looking at from my own personal experience, from my own personal effect, my own personal thing, and not like you should do this. It's more like, hey, when I, when, you know, what I tried in my experience, it was this you know, and that's it. Now, not everyone has personal, right? So there's an opposite one, the binary that I can then go, oh, I'm doing this other thing. That's not about me personally. It's about like status and power and, and the opposite of personal is power. It's about, you know, who has what and who has, you know, who's ahead of who and who's the leader and who's not. And, who's, and when I went, so we can use that as when I see myself starting to think about that or looking at that it's like whoa 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 okay come back to the personal what is your personal experience what's your personal you know awareness about um yeah anything to say further on that one no that's good and then um and then the top right is awareness right yes um or it's called motivation as well so awareness or motivation oh. is, yeah is that's the top where that is? black one yeah okay. that's where it is um, and it's really helpful. I mean, I know when Tiffany and I first started talking about that, it, it, and for me particular, and with particular designs, it's maybe every design, I don't know. I mean, again, personal, I, for projectors, it's very helpful to know what your motivation is because we, there's a different weighting dynamic for projectors than even any other type with weighting. But it's also helpful for every type is, is kind of how I personally feel about it. Um, so motivation is really, it's what are you, what is coming out and how is it coming out when you're expressing to other people? What's your motivation for sharing something with people? What's your motivation with how you're saying something, what you're saying, what you're seeing, right? Um, and so, yeah, I don't know, Tiff, do you want to kind of share your, your experience with the hope motivation that you have? Right. So mine's hope motivation. So you guys that have lo looked at some of the, uh, content through wise guys i'm very hopeful i have a positive approach it's uh, if you're pulling me out of hope it is very depressing for me i know that it's not correct for me to be out of hope every day is a new day i love waking up you know I, like it, the sun's coming up and i can't wait to see what color the sunrise is and there's there's hope motivation i find myself writing that word a lot in my texts and i'm kind of like oh there it is you know i hope that you'll whatever i hope this finds you well um, and so hope 
uh, can get on the what do you what would you say like the dark side of hope motivation is like forever hopeful that something's going to change when it's really not you know like not accepting something at face value and just being hopeful right but i can't not be so so that's not a reasonable request of me <laughs> right yeah. so that's so hope and then there's the transference or the opposite of each of our motivations and so the opposite of hope is guilt so if i'm feeling guilted into something or if i'm it, um, unconsciously making somebody else feel guilty about something. Uh, there's a lot of guilt in some of the patterns of my past. I know that that's not for me. That's out of my design. It's, it's throwing me off. I'm out of alignment. It's not correct for me uh, to feel guilty or to make somebody else feel guilty. And so that's just a red flag for me. It's like, oops, I got out of my hope motivation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like a signpost to and, and also with guilt, it, there's, you know, remember, we've talked about this before, but just again, because I keep thinking it myself, with human design, the words sometimes that we use, even like markets, like, or, or guilt or hope, it's not just that word, obviously, like we need, we're, there's like double click all the way down to like infinity, <laughs> and you're going to find like a lot more to that. Um, and so that's just like kind of the nuance of the human design language to know that there's a lot more behind everything. And even with guilt, like, you know, guilt, a lot of times the word will be fixed. It's like, you kind of feel guilty that it's that, you know, you see a solution. And so you might offer like, you know, I know how you can fix it. Here's how to fix it. Like you should do this, or here's the solution or whatever, which for a quad left, you're going to see the solutions, right? So there's these dilemmas, but it's like when Tiffany is in, it's just a sign to go, okay, am I, am I fixing or am I seeing what the potential is and just kind of hoping that it works out? you know, and some people are guilt motivation. They are not supposed to just go, oh, let's hope it works out. They're supposed to get in there and fix it, you know? So, and we're going to be pulled to the other side because that's just life. But it's, again, like, it's like kind of the bumpers on each side, like, oh, whoa, whoa, let's, uh, we're doing a fixing thing. Let's get back over here, you know? Um, yeah. April is interesting because um, I, I have somebody that's very close to me and it's, it's like the one that you don't want, right? Like it's, it's fear. It's, and so you don't want to be like motivated by fear. And so that's <laughs> what Leach is talking about. It's like, don't, don't get hung up on the word of it. Go below the surface with it. Um, when I was studying it, it, it felt like intelligence was maybe a word that I could understand fear motivation better. Um, how have you found that in your world, April? Um, those are great questions. I am still very much figuring it out. <laughs> so with um, Leisha's help, we're kind of um, discovering it together. So um, consider me a novice in this motivation section of human design. I mean, well, I, I have that experience with you and, you know, you, it's like, it doesn't mean that you're in any way have this like fear vibe about you. Like, and, and, it, and this just goes to show how nuanced it is. It's not just that word because the weird, you know, we have sort of a negative connotation in the English language for fear, right? Or just in human concept of the word fear. But fear is about knowing what information is out there, investigating the details, knowing what we need to survive, knowing, you know, it doesn't mean like, I'm afraid of it. It's just like, hey, here's some information. You know, like, I just want you to know this is the information and that's what I found, you know what I mean? And it's not necessarily um, being afraid all the time or making, trying to make others afraid, you know? So yeah, I think it just goes to show, like, I don't feel this fear thing from April at all. It's more intelligence, knowing what, you know, what, what is needed and what the tribe needs and what the collective needs and all those things and what individually she needs. Which is tricky because the opposite oh, the terms of fear is need. So it's <laughs> right, like right, if, right. if she's feeling like she's trying to meet the needs of somebody, that can be pulling her out of her design too. Mm -hmm. So just making note of that, right? Because uh, and then and then the nuance of like, okay, like what what's your aura type, right? Like if you're mm -hmm. if you're a, a fear motivated projector, for example, April is not. But if you're a projector and you're supposed to be waiting for the invite, but you have all this information that could be a very frustrating situation because you know, but you, you, you want to be invited, right? So it's like, there, that's how it can be. Um, we, I guess there's different lenses through that. Yeah. Uh, your, what, your motivation is, I, is innocence. 
So innocent, yes. We should, you know, she has the innocence. Uh, do you want to say a little bit about yeah. that before we? Yeah. yeah, I love me and Tiffany are always like hope and innocence, baby. <laughs> like they go great together. Um, and so, uh, I mean, all of them can, right? But it's just funny because those two are such like, like light, like, oh, la, 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 words, you know? So and so funny. it's just fun to say them together. Um, innocence is like, it's it's almost like not needing to be the leader, not having to, uh-oh, we lost April. Not have. having to, um, yeah, not having to drive for a result because the opposite of innocence is desire. Now, it has nothing to do with sexual, physical, any of that. I mean, it, it does, but it's not saying like someone's an innocent in that way or has desire in that way. It's more just innocently enjoying life, innocently not trying to push any agenda. Now I have a left mind. I have left arrows on the black side. So of course I see all the things that need to happen. I'm strategic. I have a plan. I always see the steps. However, immediately I make the steps. I write them down and let go of any expectation let go of any desire for the outcome to be a certain thing. And even if you think about innocence, the, the client this morning had innocence and we were talking about, she said, it's like, it's like the innocence of a child. The innocence of a child is they just want to climb that ladder. They're not trying to make it to the top. They're not trying to not fall off. They're not trying to do anything, but just innocently go and enjoy that moment. <laughs> and so what it shows up to me is like, oh, the rainbows are shining in my room through the prism or like, oh, the spring, the sprout came up and like, oh, you know, and just, just being in the moment and just enjoying what life brings or, or the pain of what life brings, right? Like it doesn't have to be everything beautiful and sunshine and whatever, but um, innocence is really not trying to lead, not trying to make things happen at all. It's just kind of sitting back and let life come to you. Mm -hmm. So that one's kind of a nice, innocent, <laughs> nice motivation to have unless you're trying to make something happen or, you know, you're in the business world and you're called the director of learning and development, you know, which I've been. And then it's kind of interesting because it's like, how do I, you know, maybe I just need to, I'm a projector, wait to be invited to lead something. And then you lead it in a certain way without trying to drive a certain result. So anyway, that's when I'm communicating, you know, my perspective, the bottom black arrow being personal, the top motivation being innocence, it would be, you know, sharing my own personal experience of like the little beautiful moments in life. You know, that's kind of how that could show up. So it, again, it, it's all the synthesis of everything else in your design and it comes into fruition by you experimenting with it and the frequency cleaning up and not being distorted and being actually working correctly within, you know, how you're designed. Just being true to yourself, really, even if you don't know your HD, even if you never get a, a foundational session, it's like just being true to yourself and the permission to do that. Um, I have one more short little story about motivation because uh, my mom, who's passed, was needs motivation. And mm -hmm. I was having a particularly rough holiday season this last year. And I remember before I went to sleep and she's been past three years now and I am mediumistic, but I don't, I don't see her walking around. I, I'm sure sometimes I'm like, would you come have dinner with me? And just, you know, like there's some sweet little things, but I had asked specifically before I went to bed, can you please help me with the situation, mom? And she, in my dream world came down and laid next to me in my bed and didn't, didn't like <laughs> fix anything, didn't do, I know we're all crying now, didn't do anything, you know, but she knew, she knew what I needed, and that was her motivation, and, and my daughter is that, one of my very close friends is need motivation, and so that is just an example of how that can play out, you know, she knew what I needed, which was really nothing, just for her to sit there, right, so now that we're crying. <laughs> I know, it's so sweet, because it's just, it's like the need question, yeah. You know, like was it, and, and there was nothing to do. There was no action. It was just, you just need someone, me next to you, you know, Her. Yeah. to feel that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I know. So sweet little example. Um, I know that you wrote in our notes, just guys to remember that the red is the design side. It's unconscious that the black is the personality side. It is conscious. And, um, and I just, I think you, Alicia, I know April had to drop. So sorry, guys, you're <laughs> seeing some April magic here at the end, but I really appreciate you, you teaching 
this because I know it goes out to a lot of people. And if you guys are um, new and you would like a session, Alicia is offering them at wiseguyscollective.com. You can go to the book a reading page or book a session page and uh, book either a half hour or a full hour with her. Uh, again, the content we're talking about today is really more of a second session. This is a little bit juicier, deeper, advanced, you know, chemistry level of it. Um, but you can also do your own homework and mess around and find out and see what you have with your four arrows and start noticing, you know, your interactions with other people or notice your environment or notice your digestion in a different way. Maybe this gave you just enough to, uh, to play with, to experiment with, to work on. Um, I also want to just quickly pitch our membership. Uh, Alicia teaches a human design support call once a month on the first Thursday at noon. Uh, if you can't make that time, there is a replay in your membership portal. It's 22 bucks a month. And so we would love to have you. We just have been going through the different centers. We just did the root center, which is like my current favorite one to geek out on. <laughs> so if you're watching this in March of 2022, that one's still live. And um, anything else that you wanted to say, Leash? No, I think that's great. And I think, I mean, you can, like you said, you can look at your arrows without knowing exactly, am I kitchens, am I light, what am I? You can also just look at which way they point and kind of just start observing there. Um, and, and that's a great place. That'll hold a lot of nuggets for you, you know? So many nuggets, so, so, yeah, much to so many nuggets, about. just you know? plethora of nuggets. <laughs> don't let the mind get in the way right like we're here for a good time not a long time we're here to enjoy the ride and to be in passenger consciousness and so I can say with my hope motivation right <laughs> that I hope we'll see you next time and um, thanks for being here at Wise Guys namaste namaste